my name is Margalit Oved Marshall. Oved is the uh, um, the grandfather of King of King David, uh, and uh, my dad's name is Awad Shlomo. Shlomo is the King Solomon. Um, I am one of eight sisters and one brother. My um, my family, my mom and my dad, Sarah. Uh, 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 my, my, my mom has a special, beautiful name of uh, that my dad married her, and she became Sarah Oved Marshall. Out of time, <laughs> Marshall too. Uh, Sarah Oved Shlomo. My first sister's name is Hamama. My mother called her in Arabic rather than in Hebrew, Hamama. And she used to tell her, you know, Hamama, I have given birth to your seven sisters and to your brother, and nothing happened to them because you were my best angel. It was beautiful that she gave her all of this remarkable, and she became a philosopher too, very wise. And I respect you. You took care of all of your sisters and one brother. Hamama. Then comes Rachel, and then comes Jacob, magnificent genius man, and it comes say uh, Leah, the the most incredible gifted woman who married a young man who was in Auschwitz and Dachau. It is quite a spectacular um, history. Something that we were in there. How did we come there? I know that my mom and my dad and her father and her mother uh, uh, ran away from the Turks because the Turks captured um, uh, Aden. It was the, it, why? Because it was the most important seaport in the world. They took it. And they came in, but then the British knew about it. And because it is British protectorate, they came to capture it from, from the Turks. Therefore, our birth birth uh, certificates of all of us was stolen or was burned in the war. Um, so when we uh, British came in, we became a British protectorate. Uh, and I had a passport, a British passport, and all of my sisters and my brother and my mom had British uh, passports. Uh, in that beautiful land, Aden, with 3,000 Jews, it was in a, we lived in three magnificent streets. Unbelievable, I can see them, I know all of them, I never can uh, lose anything in my memory. It's like I am a museum and I have all of it too. Um, it was uh, quite something, our life. At night time, we used to meet with my friends and tell stories about the fairy tales. All of them, I used to come down and tell stories with my with my with my uh, friends, uh, and then my mom used to call me to come back home. But the next morning, we used to go to markets. We used to see what's happening in the city. Only three uh, streets, and all of a sudden we see what's happening. I was wedding, and what comes wedding of India. Indian weddings come, and I looked at all of them, and I was stunned by this culture, and absolutely it looks like I observed a lot of it. The other one was the Arabic, Arabian weddings, also remarkable, with drums and with trumpets. It was spectacular. So there is no choice but to observe it. I took care of it. And this is also our life. Then we have something that came up with all of the happening, going the next morning with a friend of mine, one of the rich, only richest men had a, a, a two daughters. One of them, her name was Margalit, is my name. She used to come and pick me up to go to the convent school. And that was such a great thing. I used to say, but she's the richest daughter of our, of our uh, uh, community. Why did she come to pick me up? She was wonderful to find out that I should be with her. <laughs> and we used to go to convent school every day from 8, I think from 8 until 2 o'clock. And we observed the praying of the uh, Jesus Christ, which is gorgeous. 
And then one day, as I was studying English, they were very, very close to me, and they were very, very uh, giving me everything, you know. You know, but you, do, uh, you, you never know why. You do, you know, you just take it. One day, they said, we're going to take you to Mother Supreme. Uh, we want you to go and meet, uh, visit her. One of all of them, we were about, let's say, 20 girls, and I was the first one to sit, sit beside the nun from Scotland and France and England. So they took me, three of them, <laughs> marched me to, to her, and I didn't say anything. I sat down, and they wanted me to be one of their nuns because they think they found me that I'm a good person. And they didn't know my mom, they wanted me to be one of their, of their nuns. They didn't know my mom promised me a boy from the, from the Bronx. <laughs> I mean, and I, I listened to them. I was, I was so uh, thankful. And I said, thank you. I didn't say anything. They didn't force me on anything. After the talk spoke with me with the Mother Supreme, and all of the nuns beside her, and I was in the center. You know, you do not know how important it was. I didn't know how important it was that I was chosen from all of the whole school, hundreds of girls. It was, you, and you, I do not know in my brain, I didn't understand it, I just, I just experienced it. That's it. What was the Jewish community like oh, then? Beautiful, every woman, Every woman um, was like a dove. The people, the women of Aden, were all like doves. Very kind, very quiet. So as my mom. But my mother, whenever she had, had to rule the world, she was like a lioness. It is incredible. She was the one to make us kind and faithful and nothing wrong to do. She says, you always go straight. Straight on the road, don't go right or left, just straight, so we understood. And she was not talking with us directly. She was so brilliant. She didn't become, you know, I am, I am the teacher or the mother to discipline you. She just said it in the, in the air and, we picked, and I picked it up. We never did anything bad but always good. All of the preparation every day, we went to school, we came back, we have activities. We came back, we have to go to the market every day. My dad took me to the market. And the market is magnificent, made of 50 camels. A whole 50 camels come with goods from Lahj. Aden was a, it's a city, it's a crater. Nothing grew there, dry, only the 50 camels, the caravan that brings to Aden every day at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I was there on the roof watching it. I, it looks like that either I love the beauties, beautiful, coming through the gate of Aden, I saw the first camel and I stunned. I did not move until 50 camels passed. You know, you have to have strength to count them. <laughs> the, when the first one reached the market, the gate of the market, the last one came through the gate. I mean, you know, I remember that. I, I counted them and I heard their singing, their lullabies, their patriotic, and I learned all of them, all of them. Every morning at two o'clock I was up. Nobody asked me. I did it, you know, I was there. I, you know, it's just really remarkable. My mom and my dad and my sister never told me to come down. Never. It was a roof, and it was very dangerous because it's surrounded with a, uh, a some kind of a fence. But it is not that strong. No, I could go look three stories, and I was able to be sure that my two sisters, the small ones, will not go forward. You know, <laughs> and we were saved. I mean, it's just unbelievable. No, you are saved. You go to danger of life, and you are saved. And then, my, I have family that have a, four men, and all of them, 
family wanted to, to marry Margalit, you know, uh -huh. I, you know, and I and I said, I, I, I was very bashful to tell them no. And I says, I, I I do not want to get married. I don't want to marry. Really. They used to call me, Margot, they call me, come on down, you know, to have talking, uh, uh, telling stories. That was one of our magnificent way of entertaining and living. Oh, the Shabbat was the greatest one. After I left again every morning, we went with ten uh, baskets, big baskets. I was holding one and my dad was holding nine. We all, both of us go to the market and fill it up. One basket came to our home, nine baskets my dad gave it to the poor people of Aden. And Friday was a special night, special day to prepare for Shabbat. The light, the candle lights, it was nothing of a, uh, we are Jews, we are, I mean, we just, this is our life, you know, well, it's beautiful. Friday we have the candles, my dad comes back from the synagogue and he says, my mom opens the door for him and he says, the angels of peace are in my home. The angels of peace, Malachi HaShalom, Malachi HaSharet, are, are, are in, in my home. The Ar, the Ar, the Shali, you know everything. The, all of the peace, all of the peaceful thing in my home is because the angels of peace were in my home, and he repeated it in Hebrew. Barchuni shalom, malchia shalom. Please bless me, angels of peace. He said it so many times that we believed the angels of peace were in our home. <laughs> then my dad praised my mom as a woman of valor who can find for her prices for above rubies. The heart of her husband trusted in her. She makes him good and not evil all the days of her life. <laughs> I mean, every Friday night, he always comes late. Why did you come late, Dad? He always stayed there on the streets because a lot of children are, you know, from all over the world, Africa, Arabia, and then Spain. Sometimes they fight. And my dad is the one to separate them, give them some money, go home, go home. And then he comes home. <laughs> Did you speak Arabic at home? I spoke only Arabic. I spoke Arabic. See, the Arabic of Aden is completely different from any other Arabic, but there is always words that is understandable. The Yamanai, the Adanai Jews were so wise, quietly. They developed a whole language in Arabic. The base is in Arabic, and it involves Africa, Arabia, India, Spain, Kingdom, British Kingdom, Hebrew, Yemenite, and all of the people that they come into Aden from Yemen, from all of the Middle East, they have their own language, completely different. We have to speak, we spoke Arabic, that only the Andanai Jews know about it. But there are some words that related to other languages. I mean, it's incredible. I know all of it. I know all of it. And Can I know all of the songs. Hundreds, 500 songs we know. Can you sing one song? Yes, of course. <laughs> I'll start with the lullaby song. And my mom, my mother, I, uh, um, she, she gave birth to us, she fed us, she washed us, she cleaned our barn woman. She taught us, she talked to us, she whispered, she cried, she laughed, she sang, she mourned. She told us good and bad. She covered us. She lullabied in Arabic. <laughs> He got a colay, be him a boor. He got a colay, be him a To the You got who knows the speech of birds and all animals, you know, to talk with them. Will you please 
take care of my heart not to be hurt. Please have all of my children to be alive. Please, God. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And he did listen to her. So do you remember the riots at all? The riots in Aden? Yeah. Or oh, do I remember it? I mean, you know, with, so Aden was a paradise. It was the hardest place in the world. It was never the equator. I mean, you know, you do not know that there were also Magefa. There was disease in Aden. There was, you know. People had high fever. Five younger, young people will come back to that, you know. They were affected with the typhus. So as my sister Leah, every morning they were in the hospital. I used to take a kettle of coffee and take it in the wind up in the hill to give her a cup of coffee. Four of her friends died out of typhus. My sister Leah survived. She lost her all of her hair. And as I went, used to go there and gave it to her, it was British hospital. They wanted me to be a nurse. I said, I am responsible for my family. I'm a nurse altogether, all, anyway. They all died. Everyone who died. I used to take a bunch of girls and go and see the death of one as I go. What? Program. Yeah, that's okay. She can tell the oh, story. It's right. okay. <laughs> As I went, this is extremely important to know. Yeah. What do we do? How did we know? And the mother always, it was my neighbor, very good looking woman, magnificent, she died. And when we came, me and my few girls, as a, you know, as a, as a friends, she uncover her, and we saw her dead. Nothing, nothing, uh, 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 you know, frightened us. We just saw it, that's the case, and we left. We went from one house to another. And that, that, that was the typhus in Aden. It was a very, very severe. What about the po The pogrom came at the end. Oh, only in 1949. Because until then, we were already eight sisters and one brother. And all what happened in, in, in Aden is spectacular, you know. The, what happened, all of a sudden, the Arabs, who were, the young men were, in, were, were a, a boyfriends of my sister, seven of them. They went wild. They went from one house to another, killed and burned. All of the synagogues, all of the homes, and nobody came to help us. The British protectorate, as I recall, and we have to speak the truth, we did not complain. We did not complain. They let them do whatever they want. They cut, was, I, I hear everything, I know everything. I hear that they cut off telephones so that we do not get help. They brought from these mountains tribes that they look, when you look at them, you get, you die. And they came with rifles and they, and they killed everybody who was on, this, on, the, on the windows. Our home was inside a, a lane, but we looked and all of a sudden we know three of my friends that I used to go with them to the convent school were shot to death. There were 85 out of 3,000 were killed. All of the synagogues were burned. All of the homes were burned. And then my father's brother had a little bit of money and young Arab came to him, took his money, killed him, 
and his wife looked and, and if she had you know golden teeth they took all of the Arab young they pulled out the golden teeth from their mouths nobody came to help you know well, nothing you know nothing and the British did not allow for the dead to be buried. So you smelled two weeks about up. You know what? You do not even know. Two weeks like it was a, a whole hundred years. And we said we want to bury them, at least bury them. Nothing. Just nothing. So what happened after? After what happened, miracles happened. What do they do? What can they do? Where will we go? We cannot go and pray in our, in our synagogues. Homes are burned. Eighty-five people were dead. And some were dis disappeared. Out of three thousand. We were, we were people who were educated. We went to schools. I went to a convent school that belongs to, uh, uh, you know, what are the universities? They were part of the convent school. Men went to study. Men of Eden, the men, were part of the government of Britain. And they were very, very educated. They went to England and they started, you know, there. I mean, we were part of the, of the uh, um, science, of the, of the rules, of the laws. I mean, you know, and we did not complain. And that's what the British done. They let them do whatever they want. They went into every house, killed as much as they can do it. And they, they uh, I saw them. They brought them. They brought them from the mountains to shoot. They shot three girls that were angels. They were my neighbors. 85 were killed. Um, well then, then we had something spectacular that came, that came for education and to let to save us from that place, to take out, to take us out. There was no, no, a, uh, no peace. We were afraid, you know. We were afraid to go out. My sisters were not able to go to school. We did not go to school. What happened? From Israel came a, uh, a person by the name of Vadia Tuvia. He was a musician, a philosopher, a genius man who was born in Aden too. He came from Israel to prepare us to go from exile to Jerusalem. And how did he prepare us? He educated us. He taught us songs. Unbelievable. He gave us all of the knowledge, the life of Israel, the work, the responsibility. And we were gathered every Saturday to sing. It's incredible. And he was a great musician. He had a conservatory in Tel Aviv. So we were prepared to go to Israel. But in the meantime, 50,000 Jews from Yemen were evacuated, take them out. Well, they took everything and they walked on the desert. Some were dead, well, some died, some were killed, some were... We, we never had peace, it's just okay. <laughs> all kinds of, of, uh, of sounds and pain and all we heard, you know. Um, he prepared us in a wonderful matter. Songs, history, geography, um, and, and to prepare us to work in Israel. We, they, need, they need people to work, you know, and we did. By the time one of my sisters with it, Hannah, and we call her Hanuna, she is the fastest, the, the genius, and something, she was a nurse, she was a doctor, she was everything. 
she went back and forth on the magic carpet, the flying tiger airlines, to bring from Aden to Israel 50,000 Jews. She buried the dead, cured the sick, and fed the, the hunger. She, she brought them, she, and I used to go back and forth with her because I was studying as a teacher two solid years instead of four, and that's a lot of hard work. And I did it, and I was successful. I was very, because I had the ability in my own mind, you know, something beyond the, the education. I knew how to gather children. I knew how to talk with them. So I gathered 150 children. That was in the, in the time when I received my diploma as an as a excellent. So I said, you know what? There is a building, magnificent building of a sheikh who had 14 women. They call it Bet Abul Laban. He used to sell milk. He ran away. He ran away. Nobody pushed him. Nobody pushed. Israel never pushed anybody. They ran away. They just ran away. Nobody, not one Arabian, Arab from, you know, or Palestinian, I don't even know, they were not called Palestinian. I think the British have given the name Palestine. And Palestine is in Jordan, by the way. And you know, we did not push them. They ran away. So, as they ran away, we have had to bring the Jews from, and we went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until 50,000 Jews were taken. My sister was the nurse. I was going back and forth. As I took my diploma, I, they said, the Minister of Culture, I just received, I just saw, I don't know how, a, two letters of the first dinor, the first Minister of Education in Israel. He invited me, you know, to come and to have to be the only teacher or, or, or manager of this house. So I gathered 150 children from all over the world. I went from house to another. That is the truth. I can see myself going from house to house. In Israel. In Israel, yeah. in Tel Aviv, in Java, between Tel Aviv and Java. And I gathered 150 children from 6 to 16. And that, and that big thing that I was the only manager. I took the, six, the, the older children to take care of the small children. So I made them teachers. Every day, every day I went after I had my diploma from 8 until 4. Eight, there was no schools yet. It was a house of education, preparation, art, culture. I don't know how I picked it up. That's whatever I picked up from aid and from the, the magnificent cultures of the world. Arabia, Africa, India and Spain. And that was Allegra Fuller Snyder, the daughter of Buckminster Fuller, knew that I am using when I, when I was a teacher at UCLA already, <laughs> that I carry for cultures of the world. So that brought me, you know, with no, with no given knowledge, you know, I just did it. And I prepared them education, art, <laughs> songs, it's amazing. and manners. Can you ta it? talk about that? This is it. It's, it's not to believe, you know, we saw it. We came down the magic carpet, the flying Tiger Airlines. America was the angel who took care of us. They brought us the, I mean, the magic carpet, the flying Tiger Airlines. They took us. They saved us. Fifty thousand Jews. And Ovadia Tobia, my teacher, was the manager who, who called every, every, every name, who called every day to do it, 
who educated them? We educated them in Aden. We are we're, we're educators. Not every day, not immediately they took care of them to Israel. We have had to prepare them. So I taught the mothers at night and had their children during the day. Hundreds of them. I mean, you know, it's just unbelievable. And we, we, we need it. Would you like to go back to Yemen? Yes, absolutely. I would have loved to. I would like to see my, my, our home. I'd like to see my streets. I am, I am, I long for it. You know, a tragedy that you cannot go to your resources to say thank you. You killed us, but we are back here to say we like you. We don't hate you. We didn't complain about you. <laughs> Eden has another kind of cultures, completely other songs, completely other education, completely about intelligence. It's a whole incredible school of learning, of philosophy, of weddings, of circumcision, of death and life. We have all of it. It's all Eden. It's all it's all a, a composed with all of the languages of India, Arabia, Africa and Spain were inside through songs, through their fast festivities, through this Quran, through their everything, through Christmas. I used to go with my dad, waiting to see the sailors from all over the world coming through our streets. Incredible, you know. I saw all of them. All of the world came through Aden because it was the second important seaport of the world. Yeah. I saw everything. I know everything. <laughs> and my dad took me to a steamer point where the sailors and all of the ships were ducked there. I saw them, and my dad offered them pearls. He always also called me my dad who called me Margalita. He four names. He called me Margalit, which means a pearl. So he gave me one pearl. <laughs> he gave me the name. Margalit is a pearl. What happened to the Jews when they got to Israel? In Aden? Did they go yeah. to Mabarot? Did they go to Tel Aviv? What oh, happened? It's unbelievable. The first thing after I finished my diploma, I have seen the people that were in the magic carpet, the flight of their legs, they were walking on Allenby Road. <laughs> <laughs> We were walking on King George, they were walking in, 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 in uh, Balfour Street, they were walking to the marketplace, Carmel, they were walking, you know, so look at them. I didn't have a camera. I didn't have anything to make them the greatest movie in the world. <laughs> look at these people, they are so happy. There are families who have 12 children, and there are songs that was done in Israel about the Yamana Jews. One has 12 children, and I can sing it. The donkey came with them. <laughs> One of 500 songs. 
Was it hard for the Jews from Yemen when they came to Israel? They were... Haya no, 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 no. They went right away to dig, to, to, uh, uh, to take care of the uh, uh, Bitsot. Bitsot, you know, Bitsot is a water, the bad water, that was nobody had had to take care of them from the rain. From it. They took care of it. The swamp. They, yeah. they took care of the streets. They, they took everything and they were beloved. They found them. They found them that they are the people of the Bible. <laughs> people of the Bible, you know, it's incredible. We took with us our donkeys and our spices. We took with us our jewelry and embroidery. We took with us the Bible and all the people of the Bible. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. We took with us Deborah and Miriam. Miriam. Miriam? My name is Miriam. Miriam? Miriam was the first dancer. 5,000 years ago, that pushes aside Isadora Duncan. <laughs> and Miriam picked up the tambourine, leaping over Egypt, leading her nation out of slavery. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that is, that is what, what it is, it's unbelievable, you know. Yes, we had so much, so much, you know, and the, the, the Yamana Jews were the beloved uh, tribe. They were. They, so can you tell me about Enbal and founding is being bringing dance to well, Israel? Look, Enbal is the most famous known in the world by who? America Israel Culture Foundation who sponsored us. America Israel Culture Foundation. All of the multimillionaires of America, they should give it to them. They were the people who caused Enbal to be Dance theater. Not that we gave, they gave us salaries. No, they didn't. Six months passed by, and then we did a salary. No, we have no money. So I used to go to teach six schools in order to get some money to support my family and the children. I mean, who? But who gave us to tour, to bring Sol Europe? You know, Sol Europe is the greatest agent of the world. He brought the royal ballet, he brought, and he brought us. He brought us all the way to Broadway, all the way to Broadway. He caused, and the American Israel called us to be on Broadway every night before the curtain on Broadway goes up. So Europe used to come, kiss me on my forehead, and gives me a Coca Cola. So Europe. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I mean, what is this? How did I come here? Who brought me here? And I didn't know not even one sock in Yamanite. I didn't know. I know of Aden. I know of Africa, Arabia, and then Spain. But not of Yemen, the Jews. I didn't. I used to hear only the learning of a father to his son, to his grandson. <laughs> It is a prayer of King David. You know him, he committed a crime. We, we have, we know everything, we tell everything. He took the husband of a woman, Bathsheba. She came out on her you know, veranda, veranda, and he sent her husband to, to be killed, King David, so that he can marry Bathsheba. And God said, you are going to pay the price. It's incredible. His son died. I mean, it is, it is something spectacular that you be, that's a belief. His son died, he paid the price. So he wrote a hymn and he said, God, even if I go to the valley of death, you will be with me, you will support me. 
So it becomes a beautiful prayer for anybody who dies. Ms. Morley David, simply, first of all, yeah. all of the songs of Shalom Shabazin, you know, Shalom Shabazin is a great, the greatest a, 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 a writer, the greatest poet. He wrote hundreds of songs. I didn't know them. When I came to Inbal, and each one of us, now Sarah Rebita and I didn't even know any song. Sarah uh -huh. the founder, yeah. she didn't know. But she was a person that wanted, she was very uh, 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 um, desperate to make her herself part of a culture, you know. So who, who, are, who are her resources? The Yamanai Jews. And two from Ed and me and Hannah Mitzeli, only two. The rest are mostly, they were born in Israel, and some, two men came with me from Yemen. Ishaya is a remarkable, remarkable musician, remarkable man, magnificent, a genius, you know. And from him I've learned all of the songs, and from me, he learned all of my songs from Aden. And this way, every day, I went to Inbal and I heard somehow, the thing is this, it's a yeah, miracle, you know, somehow I've heard everything and I knew how to, to sing it. Hundreds of songs. Which of your works, what things you've done. So of your work. My, but then, then, yeah, that the thing is this, Sarah Levit and I, best all of her creation on whoever is capable. Your works. That's okay. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> she, I mean, she knew, she's clever, you know, she knew that this man, this girl is going to carry Deborah. You are going to be Deborah. I go to Deborah. Okay. So I learned Deborah's with the short Deborah, Ubarak Benavino, Hambayoma Hulemor. I learned all of the song of Deborah, who succeeded Sisera, the enemy of Israel. So I became Deborah. And then, because I became Deborah, I called my son Barak, who was my general from the Bible. It's really incredible. But I want to ask the Mar Marguerite Dance Theater Company works. Yeah, what about the Marguerite Dance Theater Company works, your own works? My own, okay. Now, now it's extremely important to know what, what the resources of Inbal, you know. Yeah. I mean, look, she this is involved. this is something that, that went, we, Not, uh, we, we, we went for 10 months. Ten months, Africa, America, America's Social Cultural Culture Foundation. We toured all of Europe, 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 uh, uh, Europe, <laughs> Europe <laughs> no, Europe, uh, uh, Scandinavia, and America. I mean, that is a great, yeah. great thing. It is that uh, Queen of Sheba. I became Queen of Sheba. I mean, I have to say, and I have to say, I have to say what I found in in Enbal. I have to say that because I found that she said, "You do it, Margalit. You do it, Margalit." Okay. You be Sabbath peace, okay, you know. And we learned everything. There were some two dancers that are magnificent. I have to say about them, Yehuda and Absalom, two remarkable dancers. I learned from them the, the dance. I mean, it is beautiful. And we learned to make the Yemenite wedding. We performed on Broadway the Yemenite wedding with about 25 songs. You know, we, I mean, it, it, it is a big, big thing. And then from there, because I was responsible to recreate what she wanted. Then I went and I've done my solo performance. I have done the Yamanite wedding myself alone. I did David and Goliath. I did David and Goliath. I have done, I was David, I was Goliath. And then the Dee Book of Aden. <laughs> the Dee Book of Aden, remember what I said about the typhus in Aden? That carried me to make a big production. The typhus, the evil spirit, by making three masks that Dani Caravan, who is the, one of the greatest artists of Israel, Italia bought him, he put made for me three masks. One is the purity is wedding, beautiful. The other one is de uh, um, uh, typhus you know, a, 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 a mask of Dreyfus, the third one is death. So I played the three parts. 
and I performed everywhere by the America Israel Cultural Foundation gave me and the National Endowment for the Arts sent me to every school in America, to every, to every university. I went and I performed with, with, with myself as a solo and then with my dance company. And I took the dancers from, from, from UCLA, the great, the great, greatest university for art. <laughs> I took them, they are all with MFA. I must have not have MFA, but what I accomplished in my life, over there my, my, my teacher said, you have masterpiece, you have PhD the way you have, you know. <laughs> I took them and I made a dance company and I took landscape, I gave them landscape. I gave them landscape that I know I want to correct the world. The power that defeated the, 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 you know, the poor, the, the gentle, the gentleman. And I said, what am I going to do? How to do it? I made the dancers to behave like gazelles, like lions. And I made a whole half of an hour of work, I call it landscape. And I performed at, U at Rose Hall. In Cinderella, you did too? Huh? Cinderella. 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 C Cinderella. <laughs> I, 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 I was speaking Spanish, you know. And in the beginning? And, and in, oh, Adam and Eve. And, 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 and I've done uh, Adam and Eve, the creation of the world. I mean, you know, it's unbelievable that to do this kind of works. How did I do it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just went and, at, and I used to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, you have to, to be inspired. You have to see visions, you know. What am I going to do? And I had it in my brain, the beginning, the middle, and the end of Adam and Eve, of the Deep Book of Aden, Yamanet Wedding, David and Goliath, and landscape. So I said, landscape, number you have to be not only dancers that you are, you have to transform yourself into animals, into tears and gazelles. And I did. I made them. It was unbelievable. And I used their faces. How, made, how did I make their faces, not human beings? You know, to, make them, to make them like beautiful animals. I took the masks that I bought from Aden, from the Bedouins. They were with, from the African. They have masks. I used them as their faces. And they are transformed, to transform them into something that they can do. Back and forth, half of an hour. The, the uh, dance, dance magazine, the one wonderful woman, I will recall her name, she wrote, it is, a, it is, a, it is it's almost masterpiece. It was, <laughs> was my first work. And it was spectacular. What I did is this. These people were back and forth going and they, the, the, the strong man, the strong person, is the lion. He is not that beautiful like the gazelle. He is not. But he could take a gazelle and eat, eat her because he is hungry, because he is strong. I couldn't stand it. <laughs> so I made it a, a pork that all of these dancers have to protect the gazelle from him. And sometimes you don't even know. You abandon the gentle, the fantastic the, the gazelle and the lion got her. He took care of her. <laughs> he killed her. I did not let her die. I did not let her die. I have given her a dance of her magnificent body and I had those dancers. They were like gazelles. <laughs> You're magnificent. All of them I have Cindy and Paige and Andrea. Unbelievable. And I said, you, I am going to make you. This might be for your lunch. Oh. Hello? Cinderella. Hi, Lily. Come up to the second floor and walk down to the end of the hall. Cinderella? Lily Karazi is here to pick Who you up. Me? Lily Karazi? Lily yeah, Karazi? 
student. A student is coming to pick you up right okay, now. Right now. To take you up. The, the, you know, the, the thing is this. I said, Cindy. Cindy was the gazelle. Two of them, my superstars. And Paige was the, was the lion. She's, she herself is very strong, but well, because Cindy is beautiful. She's like, like she's like a, um, 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 a Madonna, Madonna, incredible. And I gave her, I put her to make movements. She passed the gazelle, and at the end, I pushed her, and I made her fit to extend from one part of the stage of UCLA to the other, other side, and and her and her uh, landscape is the psyche with light, and all of the other animals were watching. What is she going to do? What am I going to? And I did, and she get up, and she spread her hands, and she gave her neck. It becomes like one yard. Mm -hmm. And she, I told her to be a tree. And even the lion needs the shade of a tree. Mm -hmm. So I succeeded to make, to punish him and let her live like a, a tree, to give flowers and fruits. And that was landscape. And I had 22 works, really.